So we just saw a few examples of momentum of inertia matrices in uh, some standard reference frames. Um, so we saw an example for solid sphere, thin spherical shell, cuboid, thin rod, uniform disk, etc. Right. So it so happens that all these moment of inertia matrices are diagonal. Right. So diagonal um, matrices. And the alpha diagonal elements are basically zero. That's what we mean by a diagonal matrix. Uh, but it turns out that moment of inertia matrices need not be diagonal. Okay, so uh, this little video is about diagonalizing the moment of inertia matrix and what we call the principal axes of the moment of inertia matrix. Okay, um, so this paragraph just says that even though uh, these examples had uh, diagonal moment of inertia matrices, moment of inertia matrices in general do not need to be diagonal, okay? But they are always symmetric as we saw earlier. Okay, here is an important theorem uh, which follows from essentially basic linear algebra. Moment of inertia matrices are always diagonalizable. What this means is that if an inertia matrix is not diagonal in some frame B, it's not B not B. Um, one can always find another frame S such that the moment of inertia ma uh, matrix in that frame is diagonal. Okay, so recall we discussed a relationship for transforming the moment of inertia matrix in a particular frame to another frame using the rotation matrices that transform between the two frames. Um, and this theorem basically says that if it's not diagonal, you can find some other frame such that uh, the moment of inertia matrix in that frame is diagonal, right? So what we're saying is that if this is not diagonal, we can find some R matrix such that R transpose I R is equal to some diagonal matrix, okay? Um, how to find this um, transformation uh, rotation uh, R from the frame B to frame S. Uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, this is the standard diagonalization uh, uh, procedure that you do in linear algebra, right? Uh, essentially, diagonalization, diagonalization involves computing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix that you do want to diagonalize. Um, the eigenvectors, it turns out, for this particular matrix, for the moment of inertia matrix, will be mutually orthogonal. Eigenvectors are not in general mutually orthogonal, but it turns out for moment of inertia matrix, because it is a symmetric matrix, um, eigenvectors will be mutually orthogonal. If you have a symmetric matrix, it turns out eigenvectors are mutually orthogonal. Um, so get the eigenvectors. There are, three, there are going to be three eigenvectors. Um, and you make the eigenvectors unit magnitude, right? So if you get non-unit eigenvectors, just divide by the magnitude to get unit magnitudes. And those are still eigenvectors, the resulting quantities. Um, and let's say these two objects are the three eigenvectors, right? So this is the eigenvector, V1, V2, V3 are the eigenvectors. And let's say for the matrix in frame B, let's say these are the three um, eigenvectors, namely three by one matrices. Um, that represent the eigenvectors of this rotation matrix or rotation tensor. Okay, so these are three by one matrices in this case. Um, so let's say we have these three eigenvectors which have been converted to unit magnitudes. Um, the theorem or, or the result is that the rotation matrix R B to S is just given by taking these three eigenvectors and arranging them as three columns of a matrix and you essentially assemble a three by three matrix. And that matrix, it turns out, is the transformation that takes you from a frame in which the moment of inertia is not diagonal to a frame in which the moment of inertia is diagonal. Um, you can prove this relatively, in a relatively straightforward manner by uh, essentially exercising uh, this uh, expression and making sure that uh, you apply the condition for eigenvectors. Okay, so in fact, that's what we are doing here. Um, let's say 
these are the three eigenvectors in terms of their matrix representations and lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3 are the corresponding eigenvalues. Then we claimed that um, the moment of inertia matrix in the frame S is given by this quantity. And then if you essentially take this, plug this in here, take this, plug this in here, and compute this expression, you will get this, right? So basically, I times R will be I times V1, which will be lambda 1 V1, and then I times V2, which is lambda 2 V2, I times V3, lambda 2 V3. And then um, you should get um, this thing. So I'll leave this as an exercise to verify this. Um, but essentially, taking this and plugging this in here will get you this, noting use um, basically that I B V I B equals lambda I Okay, so we, you would need to use this. This is basically just saying that vi's are the eigenvectors and lambda i's are the eigenvalues. Okay, so use this when plugging this in, you'll get this thing. Okay, um, so there are three diagonal elements, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. Um, we often label them as i, x, x, i, y, y, i, z, z. Um, so in this case, I have just labeled them as um, uh, using... The subscript s as well, i, y s, y s, z s, z s, and so on, just to indicate that these x, y, z coordinates are specific to frame s. But very often we will drop it with that understanding that uh, it's it's in the frame where things are diagonal. Okay, so that's what that's how we do the diagonalization. If it's non-diagonal, take the eigenvectors, stick them in a matrix as columns, and you get the transformation that allows you to make things diagonal. Okay, um, these three eigenvalues of the moment of inertia matrix, um, which we denote by I sub xx, yyzz, z, in that particular frame, they're called the principal moments of inertia, or sometimes just called principal inertias. Um, the eigenvectors v1, v2, v3 are called the principal axes of that body of that rigid body or of the moment of inertia matrix or tensor. Okay. Um, very often it turns out uh, that the principal axes often align with various symmetry axes, right? So um, for instance, the reason why all these um, moment of inertia matrices are diagonal in these simple examples is because the axes that we've used um, for representing these matrices uh, or this tensor are actually symmetry axes. There's a symmetry axis, there's a symmetry axis, this is a symmetry axis, this is some kind of a symmetry axis, and so on, right? So if you choose uh, your axes as symmetric, very often they will tend to be the same as principal axes, in other words, axes, such that the moment of inertia matrix uh, tensor is represented by a diagonal matrix, okay? So principal axes are often aligned with various axes of symmetry um, and vice versa as well. Um, here's another quick remark. So these are just a few quick remarks. Um, once you have the diagonal matrix, right, once you have the diagonal matrix, in this frame, in frame S, the eigenvectors are clearly just um, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's really what we mean by diagonalization. We have three eigenvectors in some weird directions. We are rotating the frame so that the eigenvectors become these canonical axes or coordinates.
Okay, uh, so that's another quick note. Um, another sort of quick note is that moment of inertia matrices or what are called symmetric positive definite matrices, sometimes called PSD matrices. Uh, this We already discussed this very briefly. Symmetric means that eigenvalues are real. So if you have a symmetric matrix, necessarily the eigenvalues are, are real. In general, of course, you can have a matrix that has complex uh, eigenvalues, but if you have a symmetric matrix, the eigenvalues are necessarily real. And if you have a symmetric matrix, the eigenvectors are orthogonal. Uh, and then positive se semi-definite just means that the eigenvalues are all greater than or equal to zero. Um, positive definite means greater than zero. Positive semi-definite means greater than or equal to zero. Uh, semi-definite, um, it, it can be equal to zero in some special cases, right? So moment of inertia, a principal inertia or principal moment of inertia can be zero. For instance, this thin draft moment of inertia about this axis is zero because it is thin. Uh, all the mass is exactly on the axis, so it's got no moment of inertia about this axis. So Ixx is zero because it's a thin rod, right? So you can have principal moments of inertia equal to zero, but they cannot be negative. They can only be positive. Okay, so that's that's a remark. So th those two things come from symmetry. Um, the fact that uh, eigenvalues are real and eigenvectors are orthogonal, and positive semi-definiteness of the eigenvalues just comes from the fact that it's a mass distribution that gives rise to a moment of inertia and not something else, and mass is positive. Okay, um, very quickly, if you wanted to get um, do this in MATLAB, you would take, do this diagonalization in MATLAB, you would just take the non-diagonal matrix, do eig of that non-diagonal matrix, and you would get two matrices, V and D. V is actually um, the matrix in the diagonalized form, I sub S, uh, and then V, so that's D, diagonal matrix, and then V is uh, actually the rotation matrix that uh, does the transformation that we discussed. Okay, so that's how you would um, calculate these, these transformations for diagonalization in MATLAB and any other language, uh, high-level language, scientific language like Python or its libraries will have an analogous procedure. Um, very briefly, we can uh, think of uh, a tensor representation of a moment of inertia tensor, and it's really just... Um, Ixx, Iyy, Izz, um, along these three sort of exterior products, where uh, v1, v2, v3 are the unit eigenvectors. Um, this is a, a, a tensor representation as opposed to a matrix representation of um, a uh, moment of inertia tensor, and you can go from this tensor representation to a moment of inertia matrix. Uh, very quickly by, if you just represent uh, V in whatever frame, so V is a vector, uh, and the vector can be represented in whatever frame, and uh, depending on the frame you represent, uh, this thing becomes uh, a different sort of three by three matrix. So that's another way of going from this transform representation and the principal moments of inertia um, to uh, a matrix. Um, this is just a very quick remark about, let's say you wanted to create uh, an object with a particular moment of inertia matrix. These are some simple ways of uh, constructing objects with particular moments of inertia. So for instance, um, if you had six masses, M1, M2, M3, uh, actually, yeah, so M1, M2, M3, M1 arranged along um, x direction at equal distances from the center point, m2 along the y direction at equal distances, and 3 along the z direction at equal distances from the center point. Um, and then you can essentially choose m1, m2, m3, uh, given some value of d, you can choose m1, m2, m3, so that you can get any principal inertias, right? So you let's say you want 
sum ixx equals 5, iyy equals 29, izz equals 365, you can get that by just appropriately picking the masses. Uh, similarly, you can have six equal masses, but then distribute them at different distances from the center. And by picking the differences appropriately, you can get any diagonal moment of inertia matrix. Okay, um, And that's it. Um, those are the sort of important properties of moment of inertia matrices. Another property of um, these principal moments of inertia is the so-called triangle inequality. Um, Ixx plus Iyy must necessarily be greater than or equal to Izz uh, and so on. Um, now, why do we care about this inequality? It turns out that uh, one might be able to use this kind of an inequality in, say, proving the stability of a particular rotational uh, motion for certain rigid bodies. Okay, So this is something that might come up in the future. But, but for now, it's not super important to understand this if uh, all you care about is simulating uh, a... Uh, rigid bodies uh, motion. Uh, for that, you mainly need to understand that moment of inertia matrices are diagonal in its uh, principal axis frame, or it's, that's how you define principal axes, and then the transformation of moment of inertias to any other uh, frame is given by this relationship, and that you can always diagonalize uh, a moment of inertia matrix. Okay, now I think we have enough material to be able to actually do a simulation of a three-dimensional rigid body. And that comes next.